Um, I was just saying that uh, I asked Joe at the end um, how long the other film was made. She said six to seven years. What struck me was that the power and the vibrancy, and uh, you know, just the, you know how immense the film is really in in its uh, presentation of of life then, um, and also how it's so much Sean's film, The Young Lad. And I know I know we've got Joe here, but I just wanted to ask Joe. Um, what it was like to working with that young lad because that's the first time he'd been in front of, of cameras and he gave a fantastic performance. Thanks everyone, thanks for coming. And um, yeah, it's it was uh, it's quite emotional watching that actually. I've not watched that for a long time and um, it's very powerful and, and uh, yeah we it took quite a while to find Sean. We um, I was round with Shane at his home, and um, he said, would you come to the Nottingham workshop with me, and uh, we've, we've got a, a, a workshop on for a film that I'm doing. So I said, yeah, I'll come along. He said, I just want you to do some improvisation with some of the kids there. So I did a little improvisation with about 15 young lads from the, um, from the workshop in Nottingham that Ian Smith runs, and uh, it was great. And we came out there, and, and Shane said, right, you're you're playing the mum, and I was like, what What for? I don't know. Anyway, told me about this idea for the film, This Is England, and um, and we then went on together to try and find Sean. Um, he wanted somebody that was, I think, real, and somebody that would, because um, Shane's, you know, when he works with actors, he, he uses improvisation, he has a story, but he obviously uses, he, his casting takes quite a while, <coughs> and it's a chemistry thing that's important to him. And we went all over the place, really, and it was quite stressful towards the end because he got most of the cast, the main cast, and uh, he didn't have a Sean, and the film is about Sean and coming of age and, um, you know, the manipulation of the character combo. And, you know, Shane Meadows wrote this story from his own experiences as, as a, a young man. And um, being involved with the, you know, peer pressure, <laughs> the wrong groups, or just things flipping on, on, on the side really and, and getting taken down the wrong road being sort of impressionable and um, so it's based Sean's character is really based on shame and an incident that happened um, when he was younger you know it's fictional but it's all based around sort of real characters that he knew when he was growing up and he wanted this character to you know he looked at there was several people that he really considered to play Sean but they were either too strong, too cool in a sense of they, they didn't have this vulnerability. And we went up to Grimsby, there's a, a casting director called Des Hamilton who does street casting. And um, Shane took me up to Grimsby and we went into this little, um, th this, this project where kids that are expelled from school or, you know, the, the um, project is for kids that are struggling. And Tomo was there and um, Des had already been up to see him once. It's on the DVD extras actually of, of This Is England. And he said, come up and meet this kid. And Sh Shane, myself, um, and Des was up there. And um, Tomo just came in and sat next to me. And, and I had so many experiences with different younger boys, and it was oh, just amazing. But he came in and he sat next to me, and Shane said, I just want you to do an improvisation where you, know, you found your mum in bed with somebody else. And... Um, you, you kind of walk in on them and, and then it's when you get home from school, a little bit like the scene that's in the film when he comes home and talking about his trousers, his flares that are too big. And then um, we just sat off and started doing this improvisation and Shane just said, cut, and I, I sort of, I was crying. And I looked at Shane and I said, I don't, I don't know what just went on and he just went, that, that's him. And I just smiled and it was like, I didn't remember what had just happened and it was almost, he said it was like electric. and and. Tomo and I are very close, you know, in real life, all the cast are, it's really bizarre, it's so weird watching that, it's a huge part of my life and a massive part of my career as well, but it was just very hard to find somebody with the strength, the cheekiness, the vulnerability, and he wasn't aware of what he was doing, you know, we had real trouble with him at the beginning, and then I remember Shane and Mark Herbert, the producer, taking him to one side and saying, look, we've, we've got somebody else after a week because he wasn't sleeping very well, he was staying up late, he was getting spoiled, really, and he got really cheeky and he was trying it on, you know. And Shane said, we've got someone else, and he went, oh. So I remember sitting him in the trailer and I said, look, 
Tomo, you can either go back to Grimsby, you know, set cars on fire and whatever you want to do, or you can stay here and give this a go and it's dead good watching yourself on the cinema. And you had only done Dead Man's Shoes and I remember sitting watching it and thinking, oh, this is great. And he went, is it? I said, yeah, it's so exciting. And he's like, yeah, I'll, I think I'll stay here. <laughs> so we just started to behave and we did, we really bonded. And, and his mum his mom was there with us um, on set and she was really poorly at the time. And when the film finished, a couple of months after she actually passed away, she was only 42. So we became his family and Shane and... And we was all talking about adopting him, but we, um, yeah, we've kind of had that, that real family journey, but yeah, we, it was hard to find. Now, um, Shane Meadows is known for um, uh, having a strong improvisational approach to his filmmaking, um, in the tradition, say, of Mike Lee and Ken Loach. And um, I wonder whether the cast uh, knew um, when they were being selected for the movie or when they opted for it, um, whether, it whether they were aware of of the impact of the story, you know, because um, sometimes you know, with improvisational approaches, the information about what the film's going to be about comes in later. Were you aware of that? The kind of significance of Thatcher? The, I mean, that montage at the beginning of the film is, is looking back now, is such a, um, a very clever kind of beginning to the film. But were you all aware of the, the, the impact that the film might have? No, not at all. Really, really did not expect um, th this to happen. Um, Shane builds things like he's a great storyteller and he's got a very good vision. Um, he does do things from things he's experienced, but he also, um, excuse me, he also, what he does is he, he starts off with a really simple idea and then he just builds the layers around it. Watching that montage at the beginning, it, the more you watch it, the more, you know, the journey I've had with This Is England and, the, 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 you know, watching 86 and I've just, just finished 88. It's like, he's got this great sort of vision and, and a lot of, yeah, it's like, he puts things together. He's got, he's got this um, strength in, like, you know, the, the story. What he did was he got it all together. He got this great cast together. Some of us was you know really an experience not done you know more some others have done a lot more work but he got us all together it was like a mishmash of people and um he put us in a room and we he asked us all to write backstories and he, he gave us a brief outline of this story but that he had in mind for sean but what he said is as actors in your character you can bring whatever you want to it so you can bring your own stories to it. He did it in Romeo Brass, I think, with like Paddy's character. It was a really small character, Morel, and then he, he became the main character, really. But, um, yeah, he just kind of put us in a room and gave us like little snippets of ideas. He told us, he didn't sort of say it was going to be based around the stuff that was touched on, like the racism, Thatcher, all, you know, all the, the, the political stuff. But I think with using the montage and and actually, the time when he was growing up, and, and I the same age, we went through all that, you know, it was really, there was sort of very little, you know, very few jobs. He obviously had that in his head as a story, but he didn't complicate it too much for us. He, he wanted us to concentrate on our stories as characters. Then he threw us all in a room together and saw where we sort of fixed together. Um, but the story, obviously, he, he knew what that was going to be. Um, I'm going to throw it open to the to the floor for a, for the next five to ten minutes. So, if anyone's got a question for Joe about the film and the background to the film, or the subsequent This Is England '86, or well, you can't ask about '88 because that's coming out at Christmas and it's all under wraps at the moment. Uh, but there's going to be three one hours of um, This Is England '88 at Christmas, which um, Joe and the team have just filmed. But if you know if you've got a question, just put your hand up and. Yeah, someone over there? Oh, hiya. 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 Just so people at the back in here. Hiya. 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 I was just wanting to know um, how much of what we see on screen is scripted? Um, script is written, like a treatment, and then obviously with all the dialogue, and then we scene by scene, Shane will take his actors, because he's very actor, story driven, focused on the actor's story driven. He'll take us to 
the lo we'll be in the location, we'll get on set with Shane, and then we'll play the scene <coughs> as it's scripted, and then he'll say, he'll tell one of us something, or he'll tell the other something, or we'll sit and we'll say, that feels a bit eggy, or that doesn't feel quite right, and we'll work around it, and then sometimes even new ideas are, are, are sort of, uh, you know, were born, and it's, it's that <coughs> organic way of working with him, really. A lot of things change. So the dialogue is kind of improvised as well, but he gives us the basic, you know, structure of the scene. But we, I mean, you'll get our, we're just allowed to say what we like, really, but keep it within the context of the, of the scene and not go off, you know? Um, it's interesting you, you described the, the, how they work together. I thought Stephen Graham's uh, performance as a skinhead was um, fantastic. Um, you know, the, his ability to, to just turn, you know, almost on a sixpence and, and present this very pathological, very violent, thuggish kind of um, <coughs> role. So that, that, that stands out for me for the film. Um, any, any other questions? Good. Someone, way in the back. Um, 